Around 150 million years ago, when what we now know as South America and Africa split apart, the planet's largest tropical rainforest was already in place. But a mighty river flowing from the emerging landscape east to west was altered as the Andes mountain range thrust up from the Earth's crust, blocking the river's flow, creating vast lakes and in time, reversing the flow of the river from west to east into the Atlantic Ocean. Over millions of years, this region exploded with life to become what we now know as the Amazon. The name itself evokes adventure, exotic beauty, remoteness, and danger. But few truly understand or appreciate the global importance of this region. With a rainforest as large as the continental United States, and one quarter of all species on the planet, the Amazon Basin is on a scale beyond borders, beyond even continents. Influencing the climate of the entire planet, the basin is home to over 30 million people and part of nine countries. 20% of the world's fresh water flows from the Amazon, changing the Atlantic Ocean for 125 miles out to sea. In spite of the enormous scale of this tropical rainforest basin, scientific evidence increasingly has revealed how fragile this ecosystem is and how what happens here will influence global climate dramatically, possibly irreversibly, within the next 10 to 20 years. Reports of ominous change have come to light in the 25 years since Jean-Michel Cousteau first explored this region. Concerned about the sustainability of the rainforest and its global impact on climate and the oceans, he and his team have returned to sound the alarm and search for reasons for hope. For his son and daughter, Fabian and Celine, as well as the entire team, it will be a life-changing expedition. They'll explore the rich rainforest in both the dry and wet seasons, traveling days upriver into black water tributaries to encounter the Amazon's unique aquatic species. They'll endure the rugged hardships of crossing this wild and diverse region, including areas that are now completely deforested for cattle and agriculture, such as soybeans and they'll enter the innermost Amazon, where the conflict between enterprise and the environment has become a true life and death struggle for both wildlife and the indigenous people of the forest who may hold the key to sustainability. For Jean-Michel personally, this will be an important mission to reveal our connection to the Amazon and how the Amazon may alter our future. Right now, it's 17% of the forest area has gone wow. in 30 years. In 30 we, years? 30 years. We lost 17 percent. We are around 20,000 wow. square kilometers of per year. So we already lost in 30 years an area larger than France. Imagine France completely destroyed. The size of Texas? Yeah, the size of Texas, exactly. The Amazon's contribution is as a global air conditioner, creating rain and storing carbon. 50% of the moisture for rain in the Amazon is released directly from the trees. So fewer trees means less rain. And when cut, trees release stored carbon dioxide, increasing global warming. Scientists predict that if 30 to 40% of the Amazon forest is cut, it will pass a tipping point, becoming too dry to survive. In the last four years, we have been working intensely more than 80% of the Amazon rainforest is still preserved. And here, it's still possible to do things in a different way from what was done in other parts of the world. But this is an enormous challenge. An exciting connection has been discovered between the Amazon's plants and the rest of the world. This discovery could be the strongest testament that keeping the forest alive and productive is more economically profitable than cutting it down. Even with all the bad news about the rainforest, um, I like to really present the good news. Because with over 100,000 species of plants here, the Western model of science has really only looked at about a tiny 3% of that. So there's a huge potential here uh, in the Amazon. I tend to be perhaps the most uh, optimistic person about the future of the Amazon because of that, even with all the challenges. 
John, what is this? It's a uh, cacao, uh, teobromine cacao. It's, uh, you know, most people would probably recognize a finished product and think of it as a convenience store junk food, but this is where chocolate huh. actually starts. There's a wild tree growing in the Amazon. What are the uh, beneficial properties? What's interesting right now is a lot of research going on about cacao. In fact, the uh, was a recent study done at Harvard University that showed it actually increases the elasticity of blood vessels, which means it's good for the number one killer in America, cardiovascular health. So are you saying we should eat more chocolate? Eat more dark chocolate is a big difference. Uña de gato, cat's claw. Cat's claw, a very, very key plant. I would say it's one of the top three plants in the entire Amazon. When you slice that vine, it's a great source of drinking water. And then the inner bark, where's that flesh-colored mm -hmm. ring around the outside? Yes. It has a host of oxindole alkaloids, which have been shown to stimulate macrophage, phagocytosis activity, really kickstart the immune system. You can take this part, pull it out of the canopy, and the part that's left will just continue to grow. And it's uh, to get to this size again in four to five years. Sustainable harvesting. Sustainable harvesting. That's what it's about. This is the Kamu Kamu, huh? Oh, it is Kamu Kamu, which is indigenous to this part of the rainforest. And one of the unique characteristics about it, it grows right along the floodplain. The, when the rains come, the water rises 20, 30 feet during the rainy season. So these plants are completely underwater for the first several years of their life for several months. As those water recedes, that biomass settles down, then these plants are able to extract all those minerals and nutrients, and they end up in this fruit. It's got the highest naturally occurring source of vitamin C of any plant uh, anywhere. And a, a profile of, of unique compounds that creates a biological terrain in the brain where the uptake of serotonin is enhanced, which means the world just becomes a better place. You know, it's a, a mood elevator. In the population, for example, the United States and Europe and the Western world, our problems, health problems and challenges very different than what you find upriver in the Amazon. When you really get upriver two or three days in a boat, you find other challenges, mosquito-borne issues and things like this, but you don't find the degenerative issues, cancer, arthritis, diabetes. So these same plants that we're talking about now, we've discovered a whole host of benefit for degenerative processes. I actually believe that they can reverse all of the degenerative health challenges that are, that are out there as you really get to know them. I think this is a very important part of creating a new future of sustainability in the Amazon because it actually assigns a real value to the Amazon basin. And when this has value, then the indigenous people become more empowered with the land rights and titles and deeds. You know, I see a whole new future and a whole new balance coming out of the Amazon. Managing the Amazon, I look at it, should be managed like you manage a business. And that is the capital that has been given to us. We need to manage it in a way that it provides interests, and that interest can be shared with the planet. Maybe the idea of a sustainable use of natural resources as business would have been considered romantic 20 years ago. Now, it's possible. I believe it's possible to learn from our mistakes and to learn while making a difference in the present. Because if we don't make a difference in the present, we can hardly expect to have the future we hope for. I think we are the, really the, the most important 20 years of this region. If we lose the fight for this region in the next 10 or 20 years, forget it. We have to face up to this issue and uh, find the solutions, but it's going to take a lot of energy and a lot of courage. And in the end, it's for the benefit of everyone. This Amazon is part of our life, whether we live here or not.